Hey, puppy dogs. Yeah? What's going on? What's this? There's a TV studio set up right over your top of your beds, huh? <laughs> Hi, welcome to the podcast. I'm Rich Mellon. And I'm Sandy Mellon. And Scuttlebutt is part of our Trapping Inc. media Empire. family. Okay. Empire. <laughs> em- Empire. Empire. <laughs> Okay, Empire. Come on, we're crushing it. We are crushing it, actually. The the Scuttlebutt podcast has been turning some impressive numbers recently. Yeah, well, we, we, we cracked the top 40 uh, podcasts in Canada. Yes. Which, I know, for you folks in the States, we're 10% of you, but it's still 100% for us. That's right. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we are this close to cracking the top 100 in, in the United States in uh uh, outdoor in in nature right nature yeah. wilderness right um we're not gigantic yet by any means we're not like no but we're building and we want to thank you for tuning in and helping <laughs> us do that that's awesome <laughs> absolutely absolutely we listen to a lot of podcasts our, our, ourselves we I, I enjoy listening to joe rogan yep i i enjoy uh i don't enjoy i don't ever listen to the uh the fighting ones the mma or the or the comedians because i have listened to a couple comedians but they're just so boring yeah, it's a lot different than when they're actually on the stage. But we've also listened to Candace Owen, and we've listened oh, to... Um, there's been some really, really good... Uh, the pol- political people, I mean, left or right, it, it, yeah. it's uh, always fun to be exposed to, to uh, new ideas. That. I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed uh, Joe Rogan's very much. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's been awesome. But our podcast has been so successful... We have a sponsor. Uh, oh, that we have a sponsor, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Old so, Smokes Coffee, and that's O-L-E smokescoffee.com and if you go there and use our promo code trapping inc all one word trapping inc not inc trapping <laughs> inc all one word is our promo code get you 10% off of your online order at uh, oldsmokescoffee.com so that's pretty freaking awesome that we have actually have a sponsor it is awesome <laughs> and it's even more awesome that people are tuning in and and uh, you can watch these podcasts as well as all five seasons of the TV show on YouTube. Yeah, and our YouTube channel is is a is Trapping Inc 2015. Right. Okay. So that was I, the year that it was launched. That's the year I launched it. Why I came up with 2015, I don't know. You can't change it. Oh. You know, like Well, there you go. Honest to goodness with YouTube when She's chiseled in stone, man. It's like the tablets come down. Moses brought them mm. down. They're chiseled in stone. You can't change it. I'd love to change it to Trapping Inc. TV, which is what it should have been, but it wasn't. But anyway, it's Trapping Inc. 2015 on YouTube. It's how, how you find all the podcasts, the video podcasts, not just the audio, and um, all of all the seasons, all of the right. reviews, all of the, the uh, other yes, stuff we the do. Yes, the reviews. That's the other thing that's on there, too, where you know we've done, you've done a lot of that kind yep. of thing and some how to's and some yeah some different stuff it's been cool and all five seasons of trapping inc are also up on amazon prime for you folks in in the u.s just simply uh search Trapp- trapping inc tv and uh we are turning huge numbers down there yeah, as well we are yeah. i think people are just starting to get to know us i'm obviously we've been doing the tv thing for a while and um I think what it's what's going on here is that we've had Canada covered for a while. I mean, yeah. we've, we've had Canada locked, and our numbers say that that they say we've that we've had it locked. But we just this is our first season running in airing the states on the Pursuit Channel, and of course, one of our because we don't have a full list of sponsors down there. Anybody out there interested? <laughs> <laughs> you can contact me, Rich at trappinginc dot com. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we don't have a, a full list of sponsors, so we ran a commercial for ourselves. Right. And we, in there, we talk about uh, Scuttlebutt Podcast, and we talk about uh, our very where where to go to our website to, to right. hit all our our digital media and everything else. And it's kind of paying off now. I think that's where the podcast has, has launched from. Yeah, it's really taken off. And and of course, I mean, now is the time when a lot of trappers and outdoors people are a little bit more interested in watching television or or YouTube or whatever because maybe the temperatures are chillier and and people are spending more time indoors so really appreciate and are grateful for all of you who are tuning in and telling all your friends about it yeah it, it, it always was the worry you know back in the early days when i started in tv you know 22 20, years yeah ago, uh, 20 woo-hoo. plus years ago <laughs> <laughs> there was always this worry about being overexposed yes. and you would have contracts where you could not nobody else could air that 
episode for years. Yes. You couldn't put it on YouTube. You couldn't do anything with it. And mm -hmm. truly, we had no other place to put it other than to another another TV station. So there was a, some pretty draconian contracts back then. But it, it's like you can't be overexposed today. No. No. And and even at that, you know, we'll, we'll get comments either um, on YouTube directly to your email or on our on our Facebook page, which is, I just found you guys. I can't believe it. You know, all this kind of stuff. So we're, like I said, very grateful for everyone who's tuned in and, and told family and friends about who we are and what we're doing and, and whatnot. So. That's the biggest favor they can do is just share us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's the truth about trapping, yep. right? It's not, um, there's not a whole lot of political nonsense about it. It's just, and, and reality well, there's, tv <laughs> there's our, our opinion and our take on things and I'll, well, yeah. I'll never apologize for that no uh but i guess what i meant about that is that uh, we're not um we're not politicizing trapping we're just showing what trapping oh, is yeah it's real yeah. and we, and we're not doing the reality quote unquote tv thing no. it's it you know i guess if if you could say one thing we're do we're putting the real into reality and that's made a difference. I think people really do understand. And I've had lots of interesting in my banking world that there are that there are people who who watch the show. And then I just had a colleague here not that long ago, a couple of weeks ago, and said, you know, first of all, I can't believe I know you, which is a little weird because we've <laughs> known each other for 20 odd years and, and in always in the banking industry. But he said, you know, everything that you guys put on is true as I know it as a, an outdoors person and as a, you know, an agriculturally or a, an individual raised in the agricultural community and, and all the things that go along with just being really in the outdoors, understanding what the real is. And that's been kind of cool. Yeah. So we get a lot of further feedback affirmation. like that. Yeah. 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 And we're like, we're not, we're not media seekers. And it's so no. funny because. Because I, that's our, that's our whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> The, we the, town, the town we live in or live very near. near to, very few people know that a TV program exists here. And and it's funny because there will be somebody that will start up a YouTube channel and and everybody's going to start somewhere, but they'll mm -hmm. have like 90 followers or 100 followers. And, mm -hmm. and then you'll hear a, a news piece on, on, on the local radio. Yeah. It's like, you know, they've obviously phoned them and told them what they were doing and that kind of stuff, and, which is good. You know, I mean, self-promotion is wonderful, but, you know, we have Absolutely. we have millions and millions of minutes viewed on, on uh, YouTube and Amazon Prime. And I just don't see me going and talking to the local radio station about it, you know. Or... Well, we're a little broader than that, too. And I guess, you know, what's what's more funny to us is that... We do this. It's just the two of us normally. Sometimes we have guests. Sometimes we're at different locations and whatnot. But we'll walk into Costco. And <laughs> and I had this. It was so. It's actually very heartwarming because I came from work. Hot so bed. Hot, hot bed for, for our, our viewers. Costco. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I came from work. I'm, I'm dressed in my work clothes. And, and this couple kind of followed me around for a few aisles and then finally um, worked up the, the courage, if you like to say, <laughs> and approached me and said, are you Sandy? And I knew right away that it had nothing to do with work because uh, I, I use Sandra in my work world. So Sandy in, is personal and or, and or TV. And then we had a lovely conversation in the frozen food aisle <laughs> at Costco, and it was great. You know, and it. Right, but the, the but they're not really sure if it's you, because uh, how could you be in Costco? That's uh, you know, and in that, I get that all the time too. The people walk up <laughs> and say, "Look, I'm not stalking you, but so right away I know that it's got something to do with TV." And they they say the same thing. I can't believe you're here. Everybody's got to live somewhere. And I got to buy groceries, so yeah. here's a good spot. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of bad that I got to buy groceries. I can understand you buying groceries. But <laughs> Carry on. Carry on. Okay, let's get to some traffic. So now in November, we have moved into our, our Martin and Fisher and uh, Wolverine. And Weasel. Weasel and Mink. And are all Mink. Open. 
Absolutely. I haven't set anything on, on Wolverine because my Wolverine sets also catch a lot of links and links doesn't open until the 1st of December. So Correct. I want to be careful there, but before we get into that, we had one more muskrat story for the oh, year. Oh, and it's a good one too, because <laughs> we weren't actually out paddling anywhere. We weren't setting traps in ponds. We were taking the dogs for a walk and uh, we live on a, uh, on a, piece of land 160 acres of, of property and we have trails cut through there and whatnot and the dogs love to run it's a fabulous way for them to get exercise and then they encourage us to get up they, they, off the couch and <laughs> they drag exercise, us along. <laughs> uh, exercise and they won't let it go no. like will not let it go even if we just in the cold weather do a loop around the garage and back they're happy with that but we have to get outside yeah so anyway there was snow on the ground yep um And we were walking just south of the house here. Down the gun range. Down the gun range. And I saw something. You immediately recognized it as a muskrat. I was wondering what was kind of bouncing around out there. But Eli saw it right away. Yeah. (laughs) He went running down. And he's he's an 86-pound Weimaraner. He's the big gray guy. And he's the big glue. Where is he? He's right here. Oh, he's right here. He's right here. He's sleeping right here. He goes down and he sticks his face down at it. And what does the muskrat do? Latches Bites onto him. his lip. <laughs> so and he stands up. Here's his muskrat hanging off his face. And he's like. <laughs> <laughs> he turns in a quick circle. And I was trying to get a hold of him because that's the worst thing. Because, I mean, that muskrat could have just peeled his lip half off him when, when he left, right? But, and it was bad enough as it was. Oh, yeah. There was blood flying everywhere. And. And I seen the muskrat and blood leave at the same time. So I was like, oh, gosh, you got it good. So it lands there. And then both of them, uh, Gunner, the, the GSP, gets in there. They both got their faces down there. They don't know what, what on earth is going on, Well, right? they're trying to figure out what on earth is is out there. <laughs> Here's this pound and a half, two pound muskrat. If and he's, he's that on, much. Come on, come on. God, well, he's, he's all on. He's jumping, jumping at them. Jumping at them <laughs> and chasing them. And they're both <laughs> backing up now. And it, it was funny except for all the blood that had to be mopped up later well and so i get rush i rush in there because uh it, that ain't my first rodeo goat roping or muskrat incident and uh I rush, I rush in there to get the dogs away before another one gets bit and, and we we start have to sign over another mortgage to a vet and uh, I, <laughs> I ended up kicking the muskrat through the goalposts of life <laughs> and now he's adorning a board out in, yeah. out in the shop well. <laughs> That's how that happens. He, and he was a long way from water. Nature is so cruel. I mean, yeah. if if you want to judge nature by our moral moralities, right? And what is cruel and what is kind and whatever, mm-hmm. you know, it's freezing up and yeah. that's when they get booted out. Yeah. And so then they're traveling across country on top of the snow. They, like, I mean, this is when they just become food for everything, right? Well, that's true. In fact, uh, it will be coming up two years ago that we, um, that we ran into a muskrat while we were while we were uh, processing wood at yeah. some of our friends. And a lot, once again, a long ways away from water. So this yeah. this little bugger is just out, out, out just traipsing along, right? Yeah. It's, but that's nature. Yep. That's just nature. Nature says there's too many here. Away you go. And you make it or you don't make it. Nature doesn't care. No. That's because th- there's, there's enough here that they're going to make it. And that's yeah. all that matters. And that's all that yeah. matters. So, yeah, that was, that was... That was after muskrat, muskrat. Season's still open. Yeah, yeah exactly. Season goes well, from season... 1st of October till... 15th of May. Yeah, and we and then we do some uh, under the ice muskrat later on um, in the year. Yeah. Yeah, in or, the season I should say. Well, not not so much under the ice as on top. Okay. On top in the through the push-ups. That's legal here. Yes. There's lots of places where it's not legal to go through the push-ups, but it is here. Yeah. We had a slow start though to our uh, our Martin and Fisher, and that's because I somebody I got a moose draw. Yeah. Which um, I had eight priority points here in Alberta um, that goes by priority points. And I probably could have pulled that tag earlier than I did. But we were launching the TV show during the time that I could have probably pulled yeah. a tag before. Yeah. And honestly, probably could have pulled a tag and, and shot a moose just behind the house because we have them. Actually, you need more priority points than that. <laughs> right here on our own land, and we, and we grow how many moose? Yeah. You know, right now, I had to, I had to go pull all the, all the snares uh, off of the coyote, uh, coyote bait because the, the moose are, are, are in that meadow. Oh. Like, I mean, they're sleeping there. They're knocked, they laid, laid on and knocked over some of the snares. And, oh, good. Because like, God, I, sh- I don't want to catch a, a moose. I have breakaways on it, but I don't want to catch a moose. No, anyway. we don't. Anyway, I got um, a really nice 
about a two-year-old moose, yeah. and we've got moose steaks and moose roasts in the and freezer, and wonderful. we have been enjoying it. Oh my goodness! Greatly, it's been, it's been a day since we had a moose steak, <laughs> and that's one of the things about today's world. When we were young, yeah, I mean, we we're got... still young. <laughs> Younger. That's better yeah. word. <laughs> okay, younger. Younger. <laughs> when, we, when we were younger, we got two moose tags a year each. Yes. And oh my goodness, we ate a lot of moose meat. Yeah. And, you know, the family might, within our immediate family, we would have eight tags, mm -hmm. you know? And we, but that's all we ate. We, you yeah. know, we didn't usually supplement a whole lot with any other type of meat. It was just moose meat. And then, uh, then it got, started go, going on to draws. And, and draws wasn't bad because you'd get a moose every second year. And then it starts stretching out. Well, then then you can kind of, you yeah. get a moose one year, I get a moose another year and whatnot. But now, um, the area where we did hunt, which was East Central Alberta, four priority points are required there. Yeah. And, um, and more here, right where we live now. Would have been able to to draw it this year, probably still yeah. with eight. But I have a I have a bunch built up as well. But anyway, during that time, we had a bunch of other stuff happen, and when we, there was just times when we weren't going to be able to, you know, if we drew the tag, we weren't going to be able to to hunt it. Yeah. And so I didn't want to waste all that. You know, you take all that time building those points. So we haven't had moose meat in a t in a while. Uh, I was uh, out during a check here recently, and I made uh, some cold moose roast. Oh, with onions. Yeah, and, mustard. and he posted it on Facebook <laughs> while he was out, and I'm—I don't have it at home to make a sandwich with. Somehow, doesn't seem quite right. There are certain rewards for going out and braving the cold. <laughs> well, he, you want to be—you want to be real careful. Because <laughs> there's certain rewards for coming home and having boosters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a mean girl. You you baker ladies. I man. just tell it like it is, my friends. I just tell it like it is. But yeah, so we, we did have a... A slow start. Yeah, but then we got out and we and we started setting traps and it was a little chillier. Well, it was it was it was crazy because it was it was cold and and then it warmed up. Yeah. And so then we were headed headed out there and we were like literally the front wheels on dry pavement, the back wheels on, in a blizzard. And it was a big, it yeah. was a major storm front come through. Yeah. We didn't get as much as we were on the northern edge of the storm, but uh, there were places south that, that got uh, 12 to 18 inches of snow. It seems like every place south of us has been getting a yeah. real big dumps of snow for, you know, for and this winter season. Then it got cold. And then it got cold. It got yeah. so cold, and so we're out there, and it, and it's you know it it is uh, hitting thirty below Celsius, which is like twenty below zero Fahrenheit or something. Did like you that. look that up? Because the didn't. Google machine is sitting over there. And yeah, I didn't. My but string it, doesn't go that far. I know that forty <laughs> is forty. When, when yes. you're going to the minuses, forty is forty, and That's and true. about minus twenty or minus eighteen uh, Celsius is, is zero Fahrenheit. Yeah. In between, it's anyway, guessing. The, Who the cares? Anyway, the first weekend, um, we were still running the Argo because there isn't enough snow oh, for yeah. the for the snowmobile. And uh, and it was chilly. It was too, well. Well, what happened? I mean, I once again, you know, you, you take a week to go moose hunting and it throws everything off. You've got the schedule. When those, that machine comes from the factory, it, it has a, um, I think it's a 10W30 oil in it. And it's not a synthetic or anything else. So when... After the 20-hour break-in, I changed that oil out. And when but I it changed, didn't get done this time because we had other things going on. That's right. And I changed it out to a full synthetic. I, I go with a, a 0 to 30 full synthetic. So we're out there, and it's minus 30, and I go out in the morning to start the Argo because it's got to be started. The heater's got to be going for somebody. <laughs> and I I turned the key, and it goes clunk. And I go, what? <laughs> I do that twice more, and it goes clunk each time. It's like... Did they just have a solenoid go on the on the start or whatever? And then the third time it goes, rrr, rrr, and as it turns over, it turns over faster and faster. It's just the thick oil. Mm -hmm. So we had two 
touch and go starts in the, for, for the two mornings that I got home, I changed the oil and since been out in minus 30 again and it's like, Rum, and away it goes. But yep. you just don't, you, you don't think of those things because you always have, it. it's usually getting done in, in September, early October. I, that happens and, and I never get into the situation that we got into this year, but that cold is a big deal. It is and a big it's deal. it's hard on stuff, right? But I do appreciate the Argo with the top and the heater and the blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> anyway, all good things. Anyway, we go out to set and, uh, and we, for the most part, we leave all of our boxes wherever it is that, that we have them. If they're nailed to a log or a on a tree yeah. or wherever we have them. And uh, and this year, I guess because it was, had been so wet, those boxes got chewed. Some of them did, In yeah. In some cases, this was all that was left <laughs> that was nailed to the tree. The box itself was gone. There was a uh, like a playing card. Playing card. Um, size piece, size of, piece plywood. of plywood that was on the on the tree yeah. and and so it took longer to to set traps so that first weekend we set 56 or 57 yeah and it's funny how how nature balances out because we had very few that were knocked down by a bear that's correct yeah and usually you know bears are dicks <laughs> Oh, we can't say that. I can't say that on TV. I can say it here. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, bears so, are jerks. And and we ended up, uh, you know, not having very many that were knocked down by bears whatsoever. But there was, I think it had to do with, the, with it being so wet. Because usually you get through the, the first season with that box. And I mean, of course, they're, they're pressure treated boxes. And nothing really chews on the first season. It's the second year that, that, that things happen. And then after that, they're good. Yeah. But this year, it was just like, I think it's because it was so wet, it, it made it much more attractive to the Yeah. I, and we always carry boxes with us when we go. And that's one of the other things that's so nice about the about the Argo is that all under cover, we don't have to drag, um, we don't have to drag a trailer yeah, behind us or anything exactly. like that. And we have enough traps and we have, you know, all of the bait and lure and all of that other stuff that comes along with us. But we almost didn't have enough boxes. Uh, because of of the ones that yeah. we had to actually, you couldn't even make a determination about whether or not what was chewed would be, we could still get a trap in there and catch something because <laughs> there's that much left. <laughs> really confusing landscape this year though, because it hadn't frozen yeah. and, and the water levels were so unbearably high. Like any place where the water was running, it's still running wide open. Like it, it was, was like, yeah. like, like, it, like it wasn't even winter. And then there was some couple of beaver dams that are always like a bugaboo because, you know, it's okay to fall through the ice with an Argo, you're a cork, you float, yeah. but it's the 20 minutes getting out or, you know, something. Well, first of all, it's more about letting the oxygen pour back in because <laughs> we go through that ice. It doesn't matter that I know that the Argo floats like a cork. I, I suck in so much oxygen that he gets lightheaded. <laughs> Well, you've got this top on, and when it all it's all zipped up, this convertible top, she can suck the walls in on that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just say he likes to navigate those beaver dams on his own, because yeah. Well, and one that one that's really bad is is down south there, and we go down there and it's drained. Yes, it's absolutely drained, and this is crazy because two. Two uh, years ago, uh, season four, I, I, I did a bunch of beaver trapping there, and I, I didn't get all the beaver because they were still there mm -hmm. last year, but I never, I never trapped them because I'd, I'd been hard on them. But something happened right, at, right before fr freeze up. Yeah. Because like, um, all the the bottom is all exposed. That nothing, nothing grew and again. And it's cool though, and we've got some footage oh, coming yeah. on uh, on season six where, where the under what is normally underwater yeah. on a house a beaver is house. is completely exposed now and yeah. it is very very cool one of the coolest things and and it only makes sense but you don't think of it this way you know how a beaver house is made out of mud and sticks right well the mud ends at the water level yeah so what's below is just sticks and of course it makes sense but you it never does think now. about well, it sure how would they put mud in there underwater they they, yeah. they wouldn't but but they, they they put that mud up uh, up above um and i've never really paid any attention to it before but i i happen to have lost a safety there we don't want to lose stuff right so i have to lost <laughs> lost a safety there when i was setting beaver dams uh, or beaver traps on it and so i walked around and it's just this interlaced mesh of of uh trees of of willows and alders and that kind of stuff down there it's like there's no way there's no way. So when you're pushing down on those um, 
those stands. You're pushing down and it feels springy down there. That's what you're on. You're on this interlacing mat. So you're really close to actually, you know, because the beaver, it's like a pyramid. The, the beaver house is bigger mm -hmm. at the bottom than that. Some of the, the the one I showed you the one spot where there where I'd uh, I caught so many out of I mm -hmm. caught a half a dozen off this one set. Well, it's just great huge cavern. Yeah, you know, and and it's probably it's probably the hole is that big. It's it's a miracle that I got as many out of it as I did. Yeah, you know, because I'm not blocking off very much yeah. of it. You know, but they Fasten have a path in and they have a path yeah. out, and I guess it's just you know. And then and there's another one there that I caught two out of, and I know where I set the set those and and I found the hole by using my pipe and everything but I'll be danged if I can figure out looking at it now where was I yeah you know it, it's strange it is strange <laughs> but it's 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 so neat so that one drained right out yeah. and another one drained right out yeah. also so I think what happened was is you know that the water just kept up kept 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 up and and it rained so much that it it flooded and well, once they start to wash out, they go fast, and then these beaver lost lost well, their dam. Well, that's exactly what happened at one other spot that we normally cross. We had a bridge yeah. built there that we could cross very easily with an Argo and the snowmobile and everything else. And it's below where the dam is built. So the dam is built here, yeah. and there's always a, a running water there, and we catch otter there all the oh. time through the winter time. But we got down there, and the bridge was here. So the dam here, the bridge here, and we get down there and the bridge is gone and it's about 25 feet this way. More than, yeah. And and just and not usable. Half froze into the ice and everything yeah. else. And we have we have logs underneath it and then these big 3 by 12s across the top of it. So what do we do? Well, we ended up uh, uh, hooking onto it with, uh, uh, I, I took a, a toe strap and I had Sandy drive the Argo and, and just grab a hold of each one of these three by 12s and, and pull and we'd, we'd rip them off because I've used great big 12 inch spikes to put mm -hmm. it together. And then we just threw them into the, into a, a, a sh shallow spot there that we could kind of bridge and, and let these ties freeze in because this water stays running all the time, but any place where you can cross, it is like down. The Argo stands straight up and down on its nose because you go down and straight down three, four feet. And then it's, it's, it's about this wide and, just enough so that the Argo goes down it can't bridge it by, in any way and then pop back up. Well, I just and threw enough. And of the other side is exactly the yeah. same way, so you can't. But what had happened was um, on the dam, there was a great hole in it. So it had to have just, like, nobody came along nope. there and, and nope. pulled it open or did anything. But it must have just had enough. A big flood. A big flood. Yeah. And it just busted it out there and then took the bridge with it. It was remarkable. <laughs> How that happened, and that used up an hour of time. Oh, at least. So we ended up only getting like fifty-six traps set the yeah. first time, and it was. But you know, and and there was not a lot of places that we could go because the, the either the, the the beaver dams were were not frozen. Yeah. You know, um, then then that 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 dam took, or the bridge took more than an hour mm. out of out of the day. But we had it. We had a. It was it was pretty good. You know, yeah. we got a bunch of stuff set. We got. Uh, we uh, then got out the four or five days later mm -hmm. for our first check. Yes. And amazingly, we set a record. A for record Martin. For, for Martin, the most yeah. Martin we've ever taken on a check. We got nine. We got nine and two fishers. And two fishers. And it's funny because we only had 56 traps yeah. on. Yeah. Usually I have a lot, I have a lot more before the first check happens. But the neat part was. Uh, there are four, four traps where we park the truck. There are four traps to, before we get to our cabin. Right. And there was, uh, two weasels in those four traps. Right. And I'm thinking, so it's like last year where it was the year, year of the weasel. Yeah. We had 52 of them or 54 we got last year <laughs> and go back. Then, the, then the next one we would leave. Trap number five has a weasel in it. <laughs> so yeah. now we've got three weasels. I was like, oh my God, what a year for weasels going to be. That's it. We never catch another weasel. We haven't. Well, I, no, I, I, not not, well, that not on that check. Not, no, not, not at on all. that check. And we got some really pretty little fishers. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With two female fishers. Yes. Because, and that's good because the females are, are worth the most money. Um, the uh, Martin we got, this was cool. And I'm going to do a... Uh, uh, 
a video on this, or I'm, I'm working on doing a video on this to put up on YouTube. There is, um, I guess it's a working thesis that, that you can tell the age and sex of a Martin by its skull and skull alone. And so uh, I began to think that I was addle-minded because I couldn't make this work, right? I would look at them and look at them. And, and I mean, I'm the guy that skins them, so I know what sex they are. Yeah. Right? And I'm trying to figure out whether it's an adult or juvenile or, or, or whatever. Because there is the theory going on that your harvest on your line you should be quit with Martin when you hit 40% mature females. Okay, so when 40% of your, of your catch is mature females. And that, of course, in the lore of the internet and everything else, has become distorted to 40% females. Right. Okay. There's a big difference between juvenile and mature. Yes. Okay. The juveniles, you're lucky if 10% of them make it through the next year mm -hmm. in, in many cases. So I started there and I had nine of them in front of me to, right. to skin. And I knew what sex they were. And, and then I, I started uh, checking them through and looking at the skulls because it's got to do with the amount of exposed bone on top of the, the skull and the, and, and the muscle the tissue on top of it. Right. right. And I'm going to, uh, I'm doing, like I say, I'm working on a video to put up uh, on it. And that the first thing that I learned was you can't do this in a vacuum. You can't have just one and decide what it is. No. Anybody that looks at it and says, oh, that's, that's a juvenile female or, mm -hmm. or mature male. And that, that if only you're, if you're only looking at one. Yeah. I, I would need to have a lot and I have to ha handle a lot more than when I was looking at the actual skull just mm -hmm. before I could I'd be comfortable doing that because there is so many of them. There's lots of times where you think, you know, in particular, like a juvenile male will be larger than, than any female, right? Right. But a juvenile male and a, and a mature female might be the same size and yet to look at their skulls, you got to really look. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's and uh, to, to be able to know the difference and knowing the difference, maybe that biases my ability to be able to decide what they are. But it breaks out to the juveniles are easy to determine. Then then there's the, the two year olds and they're, they've got a little bit more meat on their skull. And then there's the mature because um, Martin, you know, three, four year old, four year old Martin is, is an old Martin. Yeah. So that's that's what mature is. So turned out. We had five females and four males of that first nine. Yeah. And one of them was a mature male. Um, one was a mature female. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we had one two-year-old female. Oh, okay. Okay. And then the rest were all, were, were all juveniles. We had... Uh, of the females. Of the juveniles. females, yeah. They were all juveniles. And then we had uh, a couple of mature males and one two-year-old male. And, and No, pardon me. We had two juvenile males, one two-year-old male, and one mature male. Excellent. Yeah. So well, we're, we're, we're getting, you, we're getting the juveniles. But you had the nine to, to skin, and so yeah. you could kind of all line them all up in a row. But the other thing that we did um, when we were out there setting up the first the first traps, and it was cold, is to figure out the new wood stove. So <laughs> also on uh, season six of the TV show is the installation of our new wood stove, because I was so successful in keeping the cabin warm and keeping the home fires burning. You burned it out. That that the grate <laughs> got burned out. <laughs> so this summer we we removed the old stove. Um, it's still very usable, but um, but we are going to have to find new grate for it. I don't think you can. But that the, it's a Valley Comfort, and I think it has Sears Roebuck on the front of it. That's how old it is. Oh. So I don't think I don't think you're going to find a new grate for it. But all the, all the same, yeah, it was. It was, it's time it, it come and gone. It's just a, uh, basically a metal box. So one of the neat things about it is it really heats fast. And that's that the first, is, first thing yeah, that we learned. Yeah, the old one. The old is, one, you yeah, mean? Yeah. Yes. And mm -hmm. the, the new one has fire brick in it. So it doesn't heat as fast. And that was kind of a disappointment for you. I, we're sitting in front of the fireplace. I like things warm. <laughs> I, being warm really pleases me. And in you know, as a add a bonus, it pleases him too, um, because if I'm not cold, I'm it's it's easier to live with me. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the, this uh, particular brand we got was uh, it's a Blaze King yes. Princess or something. Yeah, it's very efficient and it's got a, it reburns the the uh, once it gets up smoke. to a certain temperature, it reburns the smoke. It has some 
catalytic converter in there and that costs three hundred dollars a ceramic catalytic converter and anyway <laughs> Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we learned how, uh, and, and it is very efficient. We don't burn as much wood in it. That's a disappointment. It, well. Because I like cutting wood. <laughs> well, we've learned to like cutting wood since we haven't had to split it by hand. Here, yeah, well, I mean, with the Range Road products, I mean, it's it's so enjoyable. I, I, <laughs> I enjoy the wood processor. I enjoy the splitter, all that kind of stuff. That's the, yeah. kind of ruining my day there by, by not burning as much. But Oh, I'll um, find other ways. Once you got the place up to temperature. Yeah. It was amazing how well it stays there. Usually, <clears throat> she has it at Madagascar hot when we go to bed. So, <laughs> might have the window in the, above the bed cracked open for the first hour or two, and then I got to close it, right? Well, she banked it in real good there, and, and it wasn't Madagascar hot we went to bed, but 4 o'clock in the morning. Holy was- <laughs> mackerel. We had to open doors and windows in order to cool it off in there. That was... Um, that was something unexpected. So well, yeah. four, we're playing with this whole o'clock. thing, and we don't need we don't need minus forty weather to just experiment. You know, it's no. it's nicer if we don't have have to have that kind of extreme roll in on us unexpectedly. Because normally, we we just don't put the strain on equipment or ourselves no. um, to go out in those temperatures. Just not worth it. So, um, but every now and then you get surprised because it it's amazing how we can predict out climate for 20 years or yeah. 10 years or five years, 12 years. Yeah. Um, but we can't figure out what the temperature is going to be five days down the road or two days down the road. Yeah, and we, beyond, we've been surprised a couple of times. Beyond two days down the road, you might as well throw a dart at the board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> well, one of the things that I want to talk about, the last thing I want to talk about for this podcast is uh, a new lure that we're doing this year. That's the last thing you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, it is. Because it seems like we've got more to cover. No, no. <laughs> we've got lots, lots, lots of stuff we can talk about in other podcasts, but we're, we're, we're running long here, and I'm afraid that battery's going to run out. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, we make our own Martin Lure, and I'm, once again, got we. <laughs> I don't get anywhere near that stuff. It's bad enough that my car smells like the lure when I go to get into it. Well, I uh, I uh, enjoy making my own lure, and and uh, it's really really simple. Once again, <laughs> I have to have one of these in my car. <laughs> well, so the leather soaks up a little bit of the O O D skunk. <laughs> this ozone it's personal a- ozone generator is yeah. it's the bomb. For getting rid of that. They're cool. Smell. They're cool. I didn't realize this, but you can do commercial. They have great big giant commercial units when there's a fire or sewer backup or whatever. They need to get rid of the smell. They use an ozone generator. Ozone gets rid of, of odor. So if you ever get in trouble, guys, like I would know this is from personal experience, take and, and light one of them up. They're battery powered, runs for three hours, throw it in, the, in your wife's car, and the leather comes out smelling fresh. You know that mm-hmm. smell that you have uh, after a, a thunderstorm and, and it's a, you know that fresh uh, smell? That, that's ozone. And that's what it ends up smelling. It's really cool. Works really well, too. I'm, I got to tell you. It does. I, <laughs> I can affirm that. Anyway, I'm making YouTube on making my lure. Mm-hmm. Once again, another thing that's, that, that's there in, in the, the queue to get done. And I use a petroleum uh, jelly. Okay. Uh, there is a, a particular brand name, but they might have a fit being associated with this. I don't know. But anyway, it's a petroleum jelly, and and I take and uh, I mix it with uh, some jam, and uh, some anise oil, and some uh, pure skunk quill. Yes, and let's just say, how do you like with the petroleum jelly? You you put it on the stove or in the microwave and let it. I put rend- it on the coal stove out in the, in yeah. the shop there, and and turn it. It turns liquid. Liquid. Because you can't get anything to mix with it otherwise. Then I can pour in everything else and 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 mix it good and. Then I, I have to keep mixing it as it cools because otherwise it wants to separate out. It's really funny. Everything wants to separate out, and that's not yeah. that's not what I want. I want it all mixed together. So it, you actually spend more time sitting there shaking the jar to, to make sure it stays it stays mixed up. We get the pure quill from our buddy Ryan Demchinsky. Ryan, I'm out, buddy, buddy. You're supposed to be <laughs> you're supposed to be sending me more. <laughs> and and then this year, I always use raspberry jam. Uh, we're not big jam eaters here. There's always uh, half a jar that's gone bad in the fridge or whatever. So that goes out and again, gets turned into lure. We had a friend here this year, Ryan, yes. fr- uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Swart from, from, from South Africa. 
And he really likes apricot jam. Everybody in South Africa likes apricot. That's true. So anyway, <laughs> being the good hostess that I am, I had apricot jam in the fridge, but he didn't eat it all before he left. So that got thrown in, and maybe that's why we're catching a lot. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Like I mean, Maybe that's like the secret ingredient. Yeah. Ooh, maybe we shouldn't have said so. <laughs> no. Most people are going to be brave enough to use their garage with their wife's car in it. <sighs> to make lure that smells like skunk. Yeah, well, I had to go change my pants before we sat down for this because I was just stirring my lynx lure and the dogs wouldn't leave me alone, so I know I got splashed somewhere. <laughs> it's very true. It's very true. <laughs> Thankfully, though, ladies, um, he knows how to operate the washing machine, so uh, when he does that, um, the clothes are usually washed by the time I get hint of there ha- having been a stirring situation. Guys, don't on. mock me. Don't mock me. Like, I'm not giving out my man card. This is the ultimate scam, guys. You can do anything. And if the clothes are clean in the washer, you're innocent. It's self-preservation <laughs> is really what it is. <laughs> Big. Don't true, let true anyone. Story. This, this is a pro tip, guys. Pro tip right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, we should wrap this up. We should wrap this up. It's been fun, though. All right, it's been a great time. Please don't forget us on YouTube. Uh, dot com trapping inc 2015 amazon prime trapping inc tv series yeah the you can also find links to our facebook pages there so we have a group which is a closed group and then we have our um our, our public page yeah. so there's trapping inc which is the closed group and trapping inc tv which is the public group yeah um or public page i should say yep yeah. and uh from trappinginc.com, you can find the links to All most that. everything. And please, when you go there to YouTube or we, when, when you go to uh, our Facebook or whatever, like the page, uh, subscribe. Share. Uh, yeah. Please the more, share. More of this information we can get out there. It's for our own good, folks, because uh, the more they see about the truth about trapping, you know, the, the bigger defense we have. We're, we're very necessary, very normal. We're, we're, it's not what the antis make us out to be. But as long as we give the antis the only voice, that's what we're going to be. Yeah. So right. thanks for tuning in. This has been always, as always, lots of fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care and maybe we'll see you down the line. Bye.